Thanks so much, Daryl, and thanks very much to Pafra for inviting me to join you. Um, I um, was very inspired recently by Sally Holland's work and the news about Wales, and so uh, this is absolutely perfect timing um, from my perspective. Um, I should first acknowledge that I'm joining you from the lands of the Camaragal people and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and of course all the elders where, the, where you're joining from today. I'm going to keep it brief. I think everyone's probably busting to have a conversation now. I know I am, uh, so I won't. Uh, I won't linger on this. Uh, but I think um, I, you know I do have you know some things I'd like to share. And thank you for the opportunity. A lot's been said about the CRC, so I won't um, say too much about that. Other than uh, for those who who might be interested to note that the committee for the Convention on the Rights of the Child is on for repeatedly. Uh, told Australia to fix this problem. And I'll just read from the, the, um, the comments in 2019, it urges Australia to explicitly prohibit corporal punishment in law in all settings, including in homes, public and private schools, detention centres, alternative care settings, and to repeal the legal defence of reasonable chastisement. And secondly, to develop awareness raising and education campaigns to promote positive and alternative forms of discipline and the adverse consequences of corporal punishment. So that's been a repeated message that the Australian government has pushed back on. Um, I wanted to just observe some gaps for us here in Australia. I think um, there's a generally a lack of knowledge and awareness about many things to do with this issue. I'll just list a few. One, there's a lack of knowledge about the law that's currently, or the laws that are currently in place. Uh, that this is a lack of knowledge by parents and the general public, uh, by service providers who are out there supporting families, and, and um, in fact, by policymakers generally. There's a lack of knowledge and awareness about where Australia sits internationally on this issue. There's a lack of knowledge about the evidence on the, of the impact of corporal punishment on children in the short and long term, which we have been reminded of today. And, um, and a lack of current information about the prevalence of the actual use of corporal punishment, which many of us would suspect has decreased, as Sally pointed out, had they knew had it had decreased in Wales, but actually we don't really know. And, uh, and there's a lack of current information on attitudes to corporal punishment. Um, I believe there were some surveys done in the past, but, you know, we just kind of don't know. And, you know, again, a little bit like the marriage equality debate that the terrible year that we had a couple of years ago, which I've tried to forget, that um, we found that by the time we came to change the laws, the, the public had moved way ahead and were already at the table. Uh, so, you know, it, it could be that we're a lot closer than we think, but we don't know. I think what we need to do is to elevate to public awareness the anomalous situation legally. Uh, by the way, those presentations were fantastic and so inspiring, uh, but you know, again, highlighted this anomaly. And the anomaly in Australia for me, the big one is that violence against women is it not only is not legal, it's also now socially unacceptable, but violence towards children in the home is okay. And I think given what Australia's gone through on domestic and family violence over the past 10 years, you know, post Rosie Batty, et cetera, I reckon a lot of people would be totally shocked to think that it's actually okay to hit your kids at home now in Australia. So every country is different, of course, as we've heard from different jurisdictions, every set of laws is different, government structures are different um, and cultural uh, attitudes are different. But here in Australia, I think we've got this window of opportunity now to highlight this immense anomaly. We now know a great deal about domestic and family violence with adults. But we know this because of considerable public investment in research over the past decade and more. 
including, as was mentioned, on coercive control. But we know very little about the experiences of children of domestic and family violence, including in the form of corporal punishment, because this has been invisible and neglected in all of our national plans. I wanted to share with you briefly a chilling, recent chilling half hour talkback radio segment that um, I was uh, part of, that I have this regular spot in, on Sydney radio. And um, I persuaded the broadcaster to focus it on corporal punishment. And I was truly shocked at some of the views that came through in the talkback. Uh, and I don't say chilling lightly. And one example was just this father who's, who rang in and he explained that he saw it as his duty as a father to belt into his three young boys. And I'm using his language um, deliberately here, to belt into them when they misbehaved, including, and he chose this example, when they had been rude to their mother. And he actually described himself as, again, he, in his words, he turned into a silverback gorilla when he belted into his young boys. And it was such, I mean, I was just frozen, you know, like, you know, I'm the guest. And then, the, you know, luckily the, the host to the broadcaster was a bloke, very emotionally intelligent bloke, I might add. Um, so as a bloke, he then said to this guy, he said, have you ever thought that there might be another way? Which was a beautiful question. And, uh, and this, this guy, he paused for a bit and he said, well, I just haven't seen another way. And look, it was a chilling moment, uh, and but actually, it was the it was it was fabulous that it came out in the way that it did, and and you know that that it was it was put on the table, and we were able to then talk about it some some more. In Australia, I think we've got quite a mountain to climb. Having said that, I thought there was a window open. I still think there's a mountain to climb. Um, right now, but I'm optimistic. Why am I optimistic? It's because of this, this, um, these opportunities that on the back of, of the domestic violence issue. Um, because it, it must shine a light on this anomaly. And, and I think it is uh, right here, right now, the low hanging fruit to make the public aware of this anomaly. But I would caution that I, it is my belief and over many years of observation of these things, that, that just presenting the academic evidence of the negative effects on children, which for us is compelling, of course, but we're, you know, we can't, just because we find it compelling doesn't mean that the public will. Just providing that evidence will not on its own influence the views of people who have an ideological attachment to corporal punishment, just like that, that caller I mentioned, and those who believe parents must have unlimited rights over their children. And there still are many in the public. And, and this is obviously the key reason why I would believe legislative change is necessary. Uh, that we're not necessarily just going to do this by persuading the public. Um, and, and finally, because we're talking here about state and territory laws, we need to be very careful that this doesn't go the way of the raising the age of criminal responsibility uh, efforts, which many of you know have been just kicked down the road continuously. This campaign, I think, needs to map the barriers up front. We need to be realists about this, optimists and realists at the same time, and I think we need to take a different approach. But I think it's absolutely worth doing, and I think the time is now. So let's do it. Thank you very much, Daryl.